Hello everyone, my name is Gabriela Merino, I am from Argentina and I will present you our work called A Machine Learning Approach for Precursor MicroRNA Discovery in the SARS-CoV-2 Genome. Precursor microRNAs are RNA molecules about 100 of nucleotides that are processed to obtain major microRNA. MicroRNAs are a special type of a small non-coding RNA molecules of 22 nucleotides that plays an important role in the post-transcription and gene regulation. This is because they can interact with major messenger RNA to modulate important biological processes such as cell proliferation and even more viral infection processes by gene silencing. Although most of the viral microRNA have been described in DNA viruses, the production of microRNAs from cytoplasmatic RNA viruses has been also proved. For instance, it has been identified the production of microRNAs in the dengue virus and even more, small RNAs encoded in the SARS-CoV-1 genome acting in the viral infection process were recently identified. Thus, taking into account the important role that microRNA plays in biological processes and the evidence that we found about the production of microRNAs in RNA viruses, we propose as an overlay the development of a machine learning model approach to predict precursor microRNAs in the SARS-CoV-2 genome. For doing this, we work on the following specific aims. The inference of microRNAs and their precursors by using different machine learning models, the validation of our predictions with biological data, the estimation of the effect of these microRNAs on gene regulation, and the analysis of the conservation of the viral microRNAs through several coronaviruses related to the SARS-CoV-2. To develop our machine learning approach, we use data from viral genomes with known microRNAs that were downloaded from public databases such as MIRBASE and NCBI. Those genomes were cut into fragments of around 100 of nucleotides that were then folded to predict the secondary structures. Both the sequence of these fragments and their secondary structures were then preprocessed to obtain different features that were useful for precursor microRNAs predictions, such as the minimum free energy release when folding and the GC content. All this data was then used for training three different machine learning models aimed to identify which of these RNA fragments are highly likely to be microRNAs precursors. The first one of the models that we train is called DSOM. DSOM is a model that combines several hierarchical layers with self-organizing maps and that uses an adaptive learning model for determining the map size at each level. The second one model that we use is OCSVM, which is a one-class super vector machine typically used for solving the problem of predicting precursor microRNAs. Finally, the third model that we use is a recently published algorithm that is called MIRDNN. MIRDNN is a convolutional deep neural network that is based on receivable networks. The first two models, DSOM and OCSVM, were fit with 83 features extracted from the sequence and the secondary structure, while MIRDNN only received the RNA sequence of the fragment, the secondary structure predicted, and the minimum free energy release when folded for predicting the probability of being a microRNA precursor. Once models were fit, they were used to predict precursor microRNAs in the SARS-CoV-2 genome. For doing this, the viral genome data was downloaded from NCBI, and it was segmented in shorter fragments that were then folded 
to obtain almost 600 of candidate hairpin sequences. These sequences and their secondary structure were then processed to extract the features required to uh, use the models for doing the predictions. Those predictions were then combined and compared and of the almost 600 of sequences extracted from the SARS-CoV-2 genome, 12 were identified as highly reliable candidates of precursor microRNAs. The validation of the 12 precursor microRNAs candidates was done by analyzing data from an RNA-seq experiment that was aimed to quantify RNA in cultures of cell lines of the human lung epithelium infected by SARS-CoV-2. We obtained this data from a public repository and analyzed the expression profiles of the small RNAs, mainly focusing in the regions covered by our candidate sequences, as it is shown in the figure at the bottom right side of this screen. We found that six of our 12 candidates revealed expression profiles compatible with the microRNA productions in those subcultures upon infection. More precisely, we identified that our six candidates shown here in the SARS-CoV-2 genome using blue arrows were able to produce eight potential major microRNA like sequences whose expression was confirmed in those small RNA seq datasets. The potential gene targets in the human cells for the viral microRNAs were predicted by combining Diana, Tox, and MIRDB. Differential expression results of human genes obtained analyzing the bulk RNA seq data of the infected cell cultures were correlated with the set of targets, allowing us to discover 100 of human genes that were targeted by viral microRNAs and that were deregulated upon infections. After that, we focus our analysis in these 109 genes in order to discover which of them were silenced by the viral microRNAs that we discovered in the SARS-CoV-2 genome. For doing this, we analyzed the full change of these genes, looking for down regulation. We compared gene expression in cell cultures at 12 and 24 hours upon infection against the respective cultures at four hours, and infected and mod cultures at 24 hours upon infection. As a result, we identified 28 genes that were silenced upon infection, as it is shown in this bar plot. You can see here that most of those genes were downregulated when we compare infection at 12 against 4 hours, shown in green bars, 24 hours and 4 hours, shown in orange bars, and when we compare infected and mock cultures at 24 hours shown in violet parts. Interestingly, most of these 28 genes that we discovered are related to respiratory diseases and viral infection. Even more, they have been previously associated with several afflictions related to SARS-CoV-1 and even more SARS-CoV-2. Finally, we analyzed the conservation of the eight predicted microRNAs by comparing their sequences with the homologous in the closest coronaviruses from bat, pangolin, and human. For each microRNA, we identified the number of changes in its sequence and particularly in its seed. We also detected the number of changes that occurs in the part of the protein that is encoded in the same region as the microRNA in order to assess if the gain of point mutation could provide regulatory functionality over the host genes without altering the function and production of viral proteins. The obtained results are summarized in the plot that is shown here, where each microRNA is in a row and columns correspond to the different coronaviruses here considered. The text that is in each cell indicates the number of changes 
that were detected in the microRNA sequence and in the protein coordinate, and the color indicates how many of the changes detected in the microRNA sequence are present in the microRNA seq. For instance, we found that this microRNA presents several changes at the sequence level, but no changes were found in the protein sequence. A deep exploring of this microRNA revealed that at least three point mutations were found between the SARS-CoV-2 genome and the genomes of the other analyzed coronaviruses. Even more, and as it is shown here, excepting for the pangolin coronavirus, at least one of these mutations were present in the microRNA C. However, when we analyze the corresponding protein coordinates that are covered by the region in which this microRNA is located, no change were found when we compare the SARS-CoV-2 genome against the other coronaviruses. Thus, this indicates that the single nucleotide mutations that we detected could have helped the SARS-CoV-2 progenitors jumping interspecies boundaries in order to allow the coronavirus to gain novel major microRNAs that now are able to target human genes through the silences of their major uh, messenger RNAs. All the results that we present here and more specific details about our work and complementary results can be found and are freely accessible through this manuscript that is published in the Bioinformatics Oxford Journal. So you can access it and you can check all the information that I was showing and presenting today. Thank you so much for your attention and of course thank you to all of the researchers that participated in this work.